Hi there, back in Free Code Camp doing the Learn Basic CSS by building a cafe menu, and we're on step 51 now, so we're going to run through the next 10 or so. Um, so, step, step 51 for the two P elements we've just added add dessert as the value of the first P elements class attribute. Um, and the and the and the value price as the second p elements class attribute. So essentially, for the first p element, we'll do class of dessert like so. And if I move along to the second p, that class will be price like that. So let's check that code. There we go. So if step fifty two, something does not look right. You've added the correct class attribute to the p element with donuts as its text, but have not defined a selector for it. So since the flavor class selector already has the properties you want, just add the dessert class name to it. Um, so as you can see, I believe we want to do something similar um, where we're selecting, um, or sorry, adding multiple um, classes to these properties here, and we can see that the, um, the CSS is being applied there now. Let's check that code. So there we go. So step 53, below the dessert you just added, add the rest of the desserts and prices using three more article elements, each with two nested P elements. Um, each element should have the correct desserts and price text or th and all of them should have the correct classes. So what I'm gonna do is just copy all of these down because actually we want the article, the P, uh, sorry, and the two Ps with their respective classes. But all that's changing inside is actually just, um, we'll see the, the dessert itself and the price. So let's just do all the desserts, whoops, like that. Just copy this one. And would actually recommend if it's sort of your first time going through this, um, just to type it all out. Honestly, it's um, sort of a, a great way to learn obviously HTML, how it should um, you know have the opening and closing tags. But because we're on CSS here, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste and sort of a bit of the the cheats way. But that should be everything. We can see we've got our desserts here on the page now. If I just move that over, um, obviously yeah, we won't be able to see the prices behind the sort of the video there. Uh, cool. So step 54, you can give your menu some space between the content and the sides with various padding properties. So give menu a class, sorry, give the menu class a padding left and a padding right with the same value of 20 pixels. So we'll go padding dash left 20 px and padding dash right dash right 20 px. And in doing that, we can see we've got some padding here now between the menu and the sort of the outer side. Cool. So that looks a bit better. Now try to add the same 20px padding top and bottom of the menu. So they want us to do padding dash top for padding top 20px and padding dash bottom 20px. Um, and as you can see now, we've added some padding to the top and the bottom of the menu itself. So this sort of burly wood um, color background. Cool. So step 56. So since all sides um, of the menu have the same internal spacing, we can actually go ahead and delete all of these properties. And all we need to do is actually just set a single padding property. Um, so often in CSS, certainly when it's related to um, what we'll probably come across as being the box model, um, or certainly if there's, let's say, four sides to everything, um, when it comes to padding, we've got padding top, right, bottom, left, for example. But if we just do padding 20 pixels, as you can see, nothing's changed in terms of the output. We've still got padding 20px top, 20px on the left, on the right, and the bottom. Um, but it's just a, basically a shorter way of writing that, that syntax. Um, and as you can see, that passes the uh, challenge there in the test. So step 57, the current width of the menu will always take up 80% of the body element's width. On a very wide screen, the coffee and dessert appear far apart from their prices. So you, what we can do to negate that is have a max width, like so. And if we put 500 pixels, um, as you'll see here now, as I'm scrolling out, we can see that, if you can see that, so let's just look at the desserts, and obviously this um, sort of border will remain where it is. Uh, so as you can see, the desserts are moving 
to the left as I'm moving along along to the left. And then when we hit 500, sorry, when we reach 500 pixels, um, that width will stay the same. And as you can see, that is the case now. So actually, the whole thing is moving. So not just this border, um, but actually the whole menu, uh, sort of the internal menu, um, I guess div or section that we've got, is moving along as well to take up, um, yeah, that that space. So there we go. That's max width. Let's go to 58. You can change the font family of text to make it look different from the default font on your browser. So each browser has some common fonts available to it. Um, but yeah, you can certainly add in basically any font that you want. Um, so to change all the text in the body, we add a font family. So font-family. And we set that to sans-serif. And as you can see, um, this is now uh, sans serif font, whereas before it was serif, I guess. Cool. Step 59, so it's a bit boring for all the text to have the same font family. You can still have the majority of the text sans serif and just make the H1 and H2 elements um, sort of use a different um, sort of font, I guess. So let's just do H1 and H2 here. So we've selected them like so with the, the comma separated value selection. And then we'll do font dash family and we'll do impact like that. And as you can see, the H1 and the H2 are now impact fonts and everything else on the page is sans serif still. Cool. And finally, step 60, you can add a fallback value for the font family by adding another font name separated by a comma. Um, so let's say, yeah, let's say, yeah, impact um, is unavailable or not found by the browser. Um, for whatever reason, we can add serif here. And this will be then available as a fallback. Um, and actually, you can see that that seemed to change here. Uh, yeah, looks like it did anyway, but maybe not. Um, but yeah, let's check that and we should have passed the test. Cool. So that's probably all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.